In another of this year's frequent reminders that the so-called AAA video game industry is not fine, EA is laying off 350 people. This is the latest round of layoffs in a year that has seen mass layoffs across the board in companies such as Activision, Blizzard and ArenaNet. And it is in fact Electronic Arts' second round of layoffs. A few months ago, it gutted a quarter of its Fire Monkey staff in Australia so that studio could focus on an already crowded live service marketplace. Yeah, because forgettable swill like Anthem is really worth pivoting towards. A lot of major video game publishers have had poor financial reports after years of unsustainable growth. They pushed monetization so hard and raked in so many ill-gotten gains that shareholders expected more and publishers couldn't deliver. Companies are raking in more money than ever, Activision having record revenue. But the profits can't keep pace, so to keep making the same amount of money, to keep trying to extract as much money out of the business as they possibly humanly can. Game companies have proven willing time and time again to take an axe to their own workforce, all in the name of delivering every conceivable last little penny to people who already have so much money they never need to worry about anything again. People who have more money than the vast majority of human beings will ever see, more than many of them will ever imagine. The people running the show in the game industry and the AAA video game industry are so greedy that they statistically have all of the money. Almost all of the money. They have most of the money. And I'm talking in the fucking world if you compare how much money they have compared to the millions and billions of people who are nowhere near as well off. I mean, you look at Activision CEO Bobby Kotick, he's got a net worth of seven million dollars. And for some reason I said million instead of billion just then. Apologies, it's not worth seven million dollars, that would be ridiculous. He's worth seven billion dollars, sorry about that, totally misspoke. More pertinently to this discussion, Electronic Arts CEO Andrew Wilson has a net worth of at least 84.4 million dollars. Not as much money as Bobby, I want sold my mother's ashtray when I was a toddler cotic, true story, but a fuck ton of money nonetheless and Andrew Wilson gets to keep his ridiculously high paying job while cutting out hundreds of other jobs himself. On the subject of Wilson, he wrote an email to employees which Kotaku got hold of, so I'll quote him now. We have a vision to be the world's greatest games company. <laughs> Fucking joker. You fucking prankster. If we're honest with ourselves, we're not there right now. <laughs> no shit. We're not there right now. We have work to do with our games, our player relationships, and our business. Across the company, teams are already taking action to ensure we are creating high-quality games and live services. <laughs> Reaching more platforms with our content and subscriptions. Improving our Frostbite tools. Focusing our network and cloud gaming priorities and closing the gap between us and our player communities. Well, that's very good, you know, as people worry about their job security as they say goodbye to their own co-workers who were just jettisoned. It's nice to get an email from Andrew Wilson essentially fellating himself and his own company. EA had a more full-bodied statement, which it sent to Kodaku, and when you read it, you really get to appreciate just how vague and waffling how a lot of what these companies say is pure fluff. They don't say anything of substance, anything of worth. Like, listen to this. Today we took some important steps as a company to address our challenges and prepare for the opportunities ahead. What does that really mean? What of substance was said there? As we look across a changing world around us, it's clear that we must change with it. We're making deliberate moves to better deliver on our commitments, refine our organisation and meet the needs of our players. None of, none of that actually means anything. What commitments to who? To fucking shareholders, probably. No one normal people should give a shit about. And then they go on to say that they're ramping down their current presence in Japan and Russia as they focus on different ways to serve their players in those markets. And again, they don't tell you what those ways are. They don't give you a clue as to what they're doing, as to how reducing your presence in a market will better serve the market. And they go on to say, great games will continue to be at the core of everything we do and we are thinking differently about how to amaze and inspire our players. I will give them credit on that last bit. Anthem was amazing. It was amazingly boring. <laughs> and it was inspiring. 
I was inspired to be sick into a little bucket. Ah, whatever. And I hate the quote at the bottom that kicks off with, the changes we're making today will impact about 350 roles in our 9,000 person company. Which I've chosen to read as them attempting to vocally minimise the losses to try and make it look like not that big of a deal. Oh yeah, we got rid of 350 people, but in a 9,000 person company. And some might think that's an unfair read on the statement, but fuck it, companies are weaselly with their words like that all the time. They're very deliberate about the words they use and they can be quite subtle in how they try and influence your perspective on a situation. I ain't gonna give EA the benefit of the doubt on that because, well, what have they ever done to earn that? The statement reads to me like someone was cosplaying as fucking Longshanks over there and told Kotaku, we have reserves. It's at this time I'd like to remind you, as I like to remind people every time we talk about layoffs that are over in the early 2010s, Satoru Iwata, then the head of Nintendo, slashed his own salary in half to avoid layoffs and the morale drop that would come with said layoffs. He did this not once, but twice, while other members of the board took 20 to 30% pay decreases as well. There are as yet zero reports, zero indications that Andrew 84 million Wilson has considered similarly dramatic but easily survivable for him pay cuts. As with similar stories we've been hearing recently, the employees were dreading these layoffs for months. Because if you want a happy working environment, the sword of fucking Damocles over your job's head is a great way to boost morale. According to reports, people working in marketing and publishing have been expected these redundancies since October in the least and one person's been quoted as saying I think some people would be relieved to not be in limbo anymore what kind of fucking work environment is that seriously where it's suggested at least that some people are relieved to have lost their jobs because at least that's one element of certainty in their future that's fucked up that should be viewed as aberrant but one of the most fucked up things about it is that to a lot of people, that's just a normal business. It's just business. And that's triple capitalism for you. That's the system, the cycle of boom and bust that's become normalized, even though it's a fucking weird and broken system. The cycle of mass hirings, ludicrous expansion, and then layoffs. Capitalism so unchecked, you can make so much money that you start failing, not because you're losing tons of money, but because you had so much money that you're expected to make more money next time and can't because you already have all of the fucking money and that's a failure that's a fail condition and that's time for the fucking shareholders to panic and bail meanwhile the people at the very top still make millions sometimes billions of dollars and don't once consider dipping into their massively deep pockets to shoulder the burden of these quote unquote failures themselves well you know what it shouldn't just be business that shouldn't be how business is conducted Conducted. That should be the sign of a failing business, a not just a business that's not doing very well at the moment while still raking in millions of dollars via microtransactions, which means you're making tons of money for very little effort. That should be the sign of a collapsing, tanking business. That's the kind of business that has its workforce uncertain about its future for months. Or it should be, that should be the condition reserved for completely failing businesses, not companies that are raking in millions and millions upon billions and billions. But it's just business, it's normal, it's the way it's always been, and companies do it because they can get away with it, because they've worked very hard to normalise this kind of attitude. It's one of the few things they work really hard at. And game companies keep doing this because they, you know, they've worked so hard to normalise it because it's part of the business model now. Hire people, pick them up, and then let go of them at a whim. Treat your workforce as disposable because what have they got to fight back against that? Are they organised? Do they have unions? No, not right now. Game developers in the AAA space exist at the mercy of game publishers, and that's an issue because corporations have no mercy. When it comes down to brass tacks, they are ruthless, they are merciless. That's how they have billions of dollars. That and the fact that a lot of investors and executives were already born fucking rich. Self-made billionaire, my ass. There ain't no such fucking thing. The AAA video game industry is broken, and it's so broken that most people don't even consider it broken because they've been conditioned to believe that all of this is normal. It ain't normal. It's nonsense. 
nonsense. It's bullshit. The video game industry, the triple A video game industry, is a Rube Goldberg machine of contradiction and complete fuckery. Well, the system ain't perfect, but it's the best we have, some people will say. Yeah, and it's the best we'll ever have if all you do is shrug and say, well, can't do better. No, we can do better. We should do better. The video game industry, most fucking industries, should do fucking better. Unionize!